What's up, Power Hitter, Solar Warrior Tribe? Today is April 18th, 2023. My name is Jarrett McAllister, the Virtual Solar Pro. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your fellow solar producers. Welcome to the Power Hitter, Solar Warrior Tribe training. I'm alongside my main man, Jonathan Bernasso, Mr. Tom Cotter. Gentlemen, how are you guys doing this week? Top of the morning, top of the afternoon, depending on what part of the country you are in. Doing well. What part of the world you're in, right? We're global, baby. Part of the world. Cheers. Got my Cheers. Ice, ice coffee, but I, Tom, you probably have the ultimate starter <laughs> hack. I think you're on to like some healthy salt, some chaga, some mushrooms, some hot water, some lemon. What are you doing these days? Doing 70 pounds of vegetables a month. All right. 70 Great. pounds. Plus yep. two pounds a day, a little bit over two pounds a day. Are you juicing, blending, eating? What, how are you doing? Uh, it's hard. It's about two pounds in the morning of, of uh, black lentils and broccoli, shiitake mushrooms, cauliflower. Wow. Kind of like a vegetable hummus that I start the day with. I love that. Just, I love just that. experimenting, seeing how I feel on it. You know, that, that's a good idea for a, a future maybe training about uh, morning routines, biohacks, uh, a lot of top leaders. I mean, the way you start your day is everything, right? Um, you know, I personally start my day with big mason jar full of greens, um, lemon water, uh, electrolytes mixed with a handful of vitamins and goodies. So, yeah, that's awesome. And I think a lot of us start the day the night before using sleep as a lighthouse, right? <laughs> a sleep nerd sending each other our scores every morning. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, look, man, we have an incredible training for everybody today, um, an important topic. Um, and, you know, we're going to put this smack dab in the middle of our mentor training series that we started last week. Got tremendous feedback. People loved it. But as we all know, NEM3 is here in California, and it's here to stay. It's not going anywhere. So we're going to be training on that, on what we know as of three, four days into NEM, right, and how that's going to work and give you guys, uh, put you in a position for success and be able to sell in this new new age of solar out here. So with that said, Jonathan, shall we uh, move on, do a few success stories, kick, kick this thing off? Absolutely. Especially uh, newer people that have joined in the last six months or joined this year. We'd love to hear a few of your wins and your successes. So raise your hand or type it into the chat. Um, it looks like username for sure would like to share a success story to start us off. Cool. If you want to unmute yourself and share. Hello. Good morning. What's That's up for sure? Good How's morning. What do you got for us? I, I need to change that name on there. I did that when I first got in. So that's my nickname. Anyway, my name is Mark Chapman from Fresno. I'm under Chris Callier, who's a rock star. Got here, relocated from Washington. Got down here December 10th. And then the rain followed me. I got down here to get away from that stuff. So my success story is I got here December 10th, rode around with Chris in the car for a week, and then started door knocking, 100 doors a day. Got my first three to bump me to tier two, and then got one under tier two, and I'm sitting waiting for all four to install. So that's my success story. Love it, Mark. Great job, man. Welcome to the platform. Kicking butt, taking names, rocking a Nirvana t-shirt. I love everything about you, bro. Yeah. Hey, I, I got to I got I got to say Chris Callier, man. What a man. I just can't say enough about that guy. He has moved me along. Without his help, I wouldn't be where I am today. Uh, but I'm looking to rock the Fresno Valley with him and uh he is just a, a rock star man to say that he's a rock star would be an understatement man that guy is a ball of energy he's 
Uh, he's super positive. He's got um, he's got major influence in the industry. He just makes it happen. He's I mean, he has joined he joined power. Shoot, he might be within six months, um, but he's just been, you know, hair on fire, uh, ripping through the platform, growing a team, crushing it, leadership, everything. So right on, man. You are with an incredible leader with the platform. So great job, though, Mark. Love it. Thank you. Absolutely. We have uh, Mrs. Tracy Canoni in the car with her hand raised. Tracy, do you have a success story that you would like to share? You know what, Tracy? You're, uh, yeah, that's not yeah. gonna work. Hey, your uh, your connection is really bad. If it can, if it uh, if it gets better here the next minute, you can go ahead and share. But we cannot hear you, unfortunately. Can you hear me now? It's a little bit better. No. Yep. Go ahead. All right. Um, yes, yeah, so I, um, what I joined Jet Power about maybe a month and a half ago, um, just um, closed our five. No. Cliffhanger. She just closed her five. That's yes. a cliffhanger. Man, I, I mean, if I could just speak on Tracy's behalf, Tracy is someone who I've known for, um, gosh, 15 plus years, almost 20 years. And she joined the platform right before the Power World Virtual Convention. Since then, she's knocked out five sales. She is going to be known as the new construction queen in this uh, industry and on our platform. Um, she's a general contractor. She's a designer, interior designer. She builds build, um, ADUs, restaurants from the ground up. And because of the laws in California where you cannot build a building without solar being added, you know, part of it. Uh, she saw the light. She said, wait, why would I get solar through someone else when I could just add it to my portfolio, right? And start selling it to my clients and adding it to my book of business. It was flipping genius. She's um, joined the platform, absolutely crushing it, about to be, I mean, she's tier two, about to be tier three here shortly. So, Tracy, hopefully you heard all that. Mad love out to you. And uh, yeah, man, give us a better uh, internet connection. Hop back on here, but we love you. So look, with that being said, we have so much content to get to today. So we are going to power on. Um, and Tom, this is one of my favorite parts of the week with a little bit of power perspective. A little perspective. Maybe you have seen, if you're on social media, Maybe you've seen some people's posts about uh, hustling. Uh, it's a pretty popular hashtag, and especially solarpreneurs and entrepreneurs and people with side hustles love to tell the world, it seems, how hard they're working. So today I've got two tests for those people that like to talk about how hard they hustle, because at least for the people that post about that a lot on social media, I kind of think they're full of it, that they're not really working that hard. So here's the first test. It's a camera test. Let's say that there's a hidden camera following you around for 30 days. Would the world be amazed at how hard you're working? Or would everyone really know why you're not having the success that you think that you should be having? Would it be obvious? The second test is the how much would you pay someone else test? How much would you pay someone else to put in the effort in your business that you put in to do what you've done over the last 30 days? Uh, most people, the answer, if they're honest, is probably not that much. Stephen King, the author, said, talent is cheaper than table salt. What separates the talented individual from the successful one is a lot of hard work. So for those of us working on the power platform, the world is wide open. If you go to work, if you put in the effort and don't fool yourself, uh, you can lie to the world all you want, but don't lie to yourself. Put in the work and then the world is yours. So think this week about 
how much you think about work versus how much you actually work. Um, that may have been my favorite perspective yet. That hit hard. It hit home. I see a lot of people that is resonating with that with uh, with them. If you just look in the chat, fire, amen, boom. I mean, that is it's so true. Um, never thought about that, right? If you were if you were being followed by a camera crew, first of all, would you <laughs> would you be okay with that? Everybody seeing your actions on a day to day, how hard you're working, uh, how you act when no one's looking. Um, no, that's incredible. I, I love it. And would you pay someone to work as hard as you do? Think about that. Would you? Um, I'll I'll be completely honest. I couldn't pay enough to find somebody. I would. I wish I could find someone to work as hard as I am. But I'm I'm working twenty four seven. I'm working hard, and I'm seeing results from it. But I know a lot of people that I wouldn't pay a penny to have their work ethic right. And so, um, awesome. Absolutely love that, Jonathan. What was your thoughts on that? Another great power perspective. It, it reminds me of a speaker I heard once say, what grade would you give yourself? If you were to grade your work ethic and others were observing you, what grade would you give yourself or compare to your peers? And if your kid comes home with a C or a D, what would you tell them that you need to tell yourself? So I, it's very interesting. Um, we need to sometimes reflect and grade our, our business like we would our kids and analyze it, dissect it, and always be improving. So good thing I have a camera crew that follows me around every day. That's what I was going to say is live like you're at Sulcon <laughs> and you're Jonathan Bernasso. There you uh, go. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And one last thing I will say to that, you guys, is you actually, you don't pay someone to work as hard as you would like. You get paid for as hard as you work, right? We are all independent 1099 power consultants and we eat what we kill and effort never equals zero. You get out there, you work hard, you will see results. You will be rewarded. And the same is true if on the other end, right? So love it, Tom. Thanks. That's right. Everyone works this differently, part-time, full-time, four days a week. And that's the amazing thing about power. So Thank you, Tom, Jarrett. We're gonna keep this going, some updates here, and then we're gonna keep it interactive for today's M3 training. Uh, so be ready to get engaged and give feedback, ask questions. This will be probably the last week or two of the GoFundMe. So we are raising funds to give gifts and give back to the project managers and the interconnection team, those that have been really working beyond their means. They, they don't make as much as we do just because their business 3X uh, doesn't mean their pay 3X. So many of you have made donations. We have a goal of $9,000. We are- um, 80, 8,100 right now. We're literally at $8,100. And every time we say this during the training, it, it goes up, up, up. So we'll look back at this at the end of the training. But if you can give anything, you know, $20 a deal, $50 a deal, it's just a tip to the project managers that work tirelessly and put up with so much uh, from the field and customers and utilities and installers and all the above. So thank you so much for participating and supporting that. As Jared said, we're excited to see you at Salt Lake City, Utah. This week, a lot of us are flying in Wednesday. We have an amazing convention Thursday, Friday, Saturday with lots of happy hour events, amazing speakers. Power's going to have a giant booth. I believe it's booth 410. Um, if you need a discount coupon here, 25% off, you could use Solar Realtor or you could use Power and get a ticket and fly in. We also created a Facebook Messenger chat for Power Hitters and Solar Warrior Tribe so we can stay in touch and share updates real time. So that is in the chat if you wanna join that Facebook Messenger group. Can't wait to see you all there. Quick reminder, JC Rangel's hosting a Mentor Factory. It's annual event he does. We have speakers like Danny Pessy, multi-millionaire entrepreneurs, and uh, it's a two-day event. We have people flying in from around different states and different parts of the country. 
which will uh, be a great event before the September Power World in San Diego. So another great event. This is something JC runs here. So go to mentorfactory.net to look into tickets. Two days, July 21st, 22nd. As always, take a screenshot of this. Uh, you know, Thursdays is power on, onboarding if you're new and power calendar. We have amazing daily trainings, daily, weekly, lease PPA, power enterprise, so much more. If you have questions on your local market, attend the market development meetings and powercalendar.com. We have SolarCom, Mentor Factory, and Power World in person, our annual uh, Power World. And there's a dinner gala as well. So lots and lots of events. All right, so today's main topic is net metering 3.0. Let me transition to another slide deck real quickly. And one thing I wanted to point out to before we make this training, California power companies propose income based rates. So it's being proposed. It still needs to be voted on. But if the CPUC is as smart as when they voted on NEM 3.0, I'm not you know, not sure the likelihood that this will not pass, but new fixed rates, depending on income, guys, if you make over 180K, you have to pay $85 a month in Edison or 128 in SDG&E, $92 in PG&E. This is just, number one, alarming that California would do this and just kind of gross. How, how are they going to collect income levels and all of this stuff? So. Post this on social media, you know, let your homeowners know about this. Use this as another reason why people should go solar and take back independence. So go ahead and Google that and post, post, post on social media. Take a video of today's training and post about that too, if you want. All right, so we're going to move into the California Net Metering 3.0 training. We are gonna be covering uh, some basics and objection handling. And then I've created some new slides and examples to show you what a cash price looks like, a lease storage looks like, a leftover utility bill looks like. This is always evolving, always changing. I'm reaching out to my friends at other companies, asking them what they're doing, their proposal tools. So this is very much a learning curve, but I'm gonna be outlining some Basic information that I think is very helpful. Some of this was covered at Saturday's Power Day in Downey. So it'll be um, a little bit of the similar content. And then I have some new content as well. And then when I get into objection handling, uh, Jared or Tom, you could help me out with that. And feel free to type any questions into the chat. So California Net Metering 3 is the third version of California's rooftop solar policy. Obviously, there was NEM 1.0 to 2.0, and that was a big deal, guys. A lot of people were worried at that time about the transition. And guess what? We all crushed it under Net Metering 2.0. So I don't expect anything different. This is just a transitionary period. It has started three days ago as of April 15th. And big shout out to Power for submitting thousands of applications to NEM 2.0. Even the same day on the 14th, I was able to sell a deal in the morning and have it submitted. No other company was doing that. Even Sunrun, you couldn't sell deals a week or week and a half before the April 14th cutoff. So big shout out to Power that we're actually able to sell deals, make income, and help people save money up until the last wire with the NEM 2.0. With NEM 3.0, credits are 75% lower, 86% lower with SDG&E. Compensation was one-to-one, -one, but now it's dropping to around five cents on average. True up will be every month, so there's no longer a 12-month true up period. And it's always important to sell clean deals, get that account number, utility bill name, match 100% up front. The offset maximum is currently 150% offset. So that will be the maximum that you can sell. And NEM 2.0, as I said, it was one-to-one. -one. You could go up to 200% offset, no problem. 
annual net metering and the savings was immediate. And honestly, California had it too good for too long. If homeowners didn't get it, let's be honest, they waited too long to the last minute to try to get <laughs> solar net metering 2.0. Under NEM 3.0, Exported credit to the grid, you don't really want to give it to the grid if you can avoid it, is much less, 150% max offset, monthly net metering billing, and there is long-term savings. And the utilities that this is affecting are the big three, SoCal Edison, SDG&E, and PG&E. That's what NEM 3.0 is affecting. It is not currently affecting what we call the municipalities like LADWP. That's a big one. People are probably going to be door knocking and running ads in that area. There's Anaheim, Azusa, Pasadena, Burbank. There's a lot of municipalities that have their own version of net billing. Everyone is unique, um, but they're not switching to NEM 3.0, okay? So it's only Edison, SDG, and e, PG, and e. But mark my words, guys, all the utilities across the country are going to be switching to some sort of time of use model eventually. I think we just saw an article that North Carolina is announcing their version of NEM 3.0 since California did it. And that might take effect in July. If someone has that article posted into the chat, we are going to be seeing a transition of time of use and NEM 2 and 3 in other states. It's going to be a gold rush, a gold mine, in my opinion. We are all going to have this deadline as these states transition. So more urgency these next five, 10 years, it's going to be in our benefit. This is going to be positive, in my opinion. All right, so let's get into a few basics. And a quick shout out to Cynthia for helping create some of these slides. NEM 3.0, California, again, too good for too long. Homeowners have waited. When you look at Florida, Texas, and Nevada, they've been selling solar with 12 cents, 14 cents, 16 cents kilowatt hours. Their buyback in Nevada is 75% and their rates were about 15 cents and their rates just jumped to 19 to 20 cents in Nevada. But they've been selling solar in those markets with the same value proposition and without batteries some of the time. In California, we have the highest rates of electricity and we get to now sell batteries. Um, so we have it really good. Just like Hawaii sells solar and batteries all the time, every house has it. That's the way California is going and it's going to be awesome. So a few notes, don't focus on savings. I recommend taking that word out of your vocabulary. We have to focus on other things that we're helping solve problems for. Other safety, security, emotion, freedom, independence, you know, value add, all these things. And sometimes it could be a bill swap or very little savings or long-term savings over the years. Um, so we are solving problems and we sell the solutions of what we offer. Some of you may remember in 2016, we were selling PPA and leases at 15 cents a kilowatt hour with a 2.9 escalator when the homeowner's rates for electricity were 17 and 19 cents. So we just have to go back to our roots and go back to those sales skills. And we, we crushed it during that time, if some of you can relate to those days. So it's no different. I do think come end of summer, we will see California bounce back with a vengeance. I'm still getting referrals. You know, one of the things I say is a lot of your customers may not know if it's NEM 1, 3, 7. Some of the customers don't remember the panel specs on their roof months after their installation. They don't know if they're storing it on site or in the grid. Some customers don't know. So it's up to us as the professionals to present the best option to them with all the tools that we're going to be covering today. So those things that you really want to focus on, rising rates. You can protect yourself from large increases that we're seeing annually, often 5 to 14% per year rate hikes in California and across the country too now. Tax incentives, by going solar, you can take advantage of thousands of dollars in tax incentives that are currently available. 
your clients will get more tax credits now with battery systems and solar systems. And some of the compensation commissions for us has actually gone up. So long-term savings over 10, 15, 25 years, security ownership, protect yourself and your family from power outages. If there's power outages in California, which is happening more and more, and more and more people are going with electric vehicles and the grid just can't handle it. Let's be honest. Retirement, savings, people on a fixed income, just look at the gas prices in California. People are pissed about those. So this is really hedging your bets against the rising rates and the utility. Freedom, independence, protect, secure your own power, don't rely on the grid and much more. That blackout protection is one of the things that the batteries can do. And I also wanna take a second to mention that net metering 3.0, people came up with a solution we're gonna see in a second, that you have this rate arbitrage self-consumption device, but you, maybe they don't want the backup blackout protection. So we came up with new products, new, new promotions and incentives and pricing to help combat this NEM 3.0. These devices are gonna see in the solar's produced, does the home need it? Is the battery charged? Is the car need to be charged now? And maybe then we heat the water eventually. We're, we're gonna be seeing a transition of smart homes and electrification of homes and cars, guys, that we can't even foresee yet. And it's only gonna get better and give us more opportunity to help more and more homeowners uh, go solar. All right, Jared, why don't you read me this first line here, objection with NEM 3.0 in bold. Absolutely, JB. So, you know, I heard that the solar industry is not going to do so well after the change with NEM 3.0. Yeah, Jared, you know, a lot of people are talking about NEM3 and those, those crooked utilities and they, they pass this. I know what you mean. What we found is it's not much different when we went from NEM1 to NEM2. Did you, do you remember that change or hear about it? Probably not. No, actually, I, I don't. I, yeah. I barely even know what NEM3 is. Yeah, it went from, <laughs> went from NEM1 to NEM2. And did you know that Hawaii they actually don't have any net metering. So if you send the grid energy in Hawaii, you don't get paid for it. Um, but I don't know if you've been to Hawaii, every home has solar and a battery in Hawaii because their rates are like 60 cents a kilowatt hour. So Jared, the utilities will continue to gouge us to death. We'll use more electricity with electric vehicles. People are doing heat pumps now. Your gas bill probably rose up a couple hundreds of dollars every month in the winter. They doubled pool pumps, heating and cooling and everything else. And the coolest part, instead of giving your energy back to the grid, like people did before, now you get to store it on site with a battery with NEM 3.0 and have extra benefits. And you're going to get a larger tax credit. So what you're saying is now, instead of like, can I use that energy if the grid goes down, that excess electricity? Like, am I able to do that with this new NEM3 system? Yeah, that's one of the two options we'll show you. So we do have the ability for those batteries to give you backup protection in the blackout. If you have blackouts, we could talk about that. Otherwise, if you just want a little bit better ROI, a little bit more long-term savings, we have this rate arbitrage uh, non-backup option, which gets, gets the value even better. So we'll review those two options with you. All right, go ahead for the All next. right. So, uh, well, you know, I heard solar's no longer good for customers. You must have heard about that recent change in solar compensation, but solar is still great. It will save you thousands of dollars long-term and you could qualify for thousands or tens of thousands of dollars in incentives while they last. But what is correct about that is that solar compensation has changed. So the utility companies won't pay you very much for that extra energy. So it's simply best to store it on site in batteries. Got it. Yeah, rather than using 
the utility to store up credits, you're actually going to be using a battery now to store up energy. That's right. But, you know, I, I heard that it's not worth going with solar anymore. You know, I, it's, that it's way too expensive now. What is true about that misconception, Jared, is that it is now more beneficial to go solar with storage, which is better than just solar only. But it comes with so many more advantages, including a huge increase in the tax incentives you're going to get back. Okay. Well, but then I also heard, my friend Timmy told me, that I heard the solar industry is not going to do so well after the change with NEM 3.0. Uh, Timmy that doesn't have a job? Do we have the same friend? I'm just kidding. Solar bro Timmy. You know, he stands oh, out. Timmy. Uh, yeah. Costco, yeah. What is, what is true about that statement, Jerry, is that the NEM 3.0 that they just did was a big change. Utility companies are no longer purchasing solar power from homeowners in a one-to-one -one relationship. They can barely afford to fix the grid and all the fires they're causing. Solar is expected to more than double in business over the next 10 years. And solar has been around since the 60s, by the way with the solar federal tax credit getting extended by the government. You should connect with my solar partners. They're helping a lot of clients in your area take advantage of all the incentives. One thing I wanna point out to just to stop from this for a second, we are seeing the utilities get really smart and from four to nine or five to eight, they're really jacking up the price of electricity. What we're seeing is clients that we helped years ago are having to pay the utility more of a leftover bill because the utilities are really jacking up that price um, from four to nine o'clock. So batteries and a rate arbitrage self-consumption mode, that really is the future when you think about it. You know, our prior clients, most of them didn't get that device. And now when utilities squeeze you from four to nine, they're owing the utility more and more at the end of their year. So I really am positive and I, about this change, and I think it'll just do better for everyone. Yeah, in the long run, solar plus storage is the best solution. And to your point about the utilities jacking up the rates at time of use, I spoke to a homeowner just last night who was uh, expressing the pain how his time of use used to be from four to eight. They now stretched it from three to nine, right? So they tack on an hour earlier, an hour later, just like you said, they're getting smart, charging okay. people the most when they need the electricity the most. Exactly. So uh, again, shout out to an amazing tier three mentor, Cynthia Alvidris for making those objection handling slides. We use some of those in a real estate company presentation, actually a training we did for a real estate company. They asked us to go and train on this change in California. So make sure you're, you're doing that, guys. Free lunch and learn, sponsor a breakfast, um, get into those real estate offices. All right. I'll, uh, I'll add another thought, Jonathan, just and thanks also, Cynthia, for putting those together. That's good stuff. You know, most of my solar career has been spent selling in PG&E territory and Long time ago, PG&E used to have five different tiers, not the kind that run down your face necessarily, but the stairs kind that you climb up and up. I, I literally say that in proposals and people yeah. like it. Um, anyways, so then they went from five tiers down to four tiers and then three tiers. So I tell people, you know, PG&E plays this shell game. You know, where's where's the P? Where's the P? And um, with self-consumption batteries like we're moving into uh, big time in California, that's really the only thing is storage that can help insulate a homeowner from the changes that come from these games that the utilities play. So if you really want to insulate them from whatever changes are coming down the pike, uh, self-consumption or backup power um, is really the way to go with homeowners. Beautiful. I have never heard that. The tears, not the ones coming down the face, but the ones you climb up. We're usually looking at a screenshot of their utility bill at that point. 
That's what I was hoping you were leaving. Feel the pain. Feel yeah. the pain. <laughs> that's, that's why Tom's the best. OG. To learn more about them three, and we're going to get into much more good stuff right now, but just a friendly reminder, knowledge base, FAQ, toolkit, please attend the market development meetings every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on Zoom every single week. I believe Jordan Shaw, and maybe Tony Denner will be leading this Wednesday is doing a recap of this training and more knowledge. So always stay up to date. Many resources here in California with power. All right, so let's get into the products and the offering and solutions that power has. Here you can see some end phase batteries. Um, and of course, we also have solar edge batteries and we should be getting Franklin batteries pretty soon here. But here you could see an end phase battery. You could see four of them in the garage. You could see two of them out here on the side of the house. So really nice solution as we transition into net metering 3.0. And the three solutions that Power has come up with is called, one is Power House. It is a partial or a full backup. So it is battery solution that can do backup for blackout protection. And then they have something called power saver. So it is a battery that is only gonna be acting as a self-consumption or arbitrage device. It's gonna hold that energy during the day, let the user use it back four to nine, five to eight. And eventually we're gonna learn about load shifting or, or where we can actually put it back to the grid. So we don't have information on that quite yet. We are focusing on self-consumption. You store it during the day, take it back for the home at night. Um, but we will be getting into a scenario where the battery can give it back at certain times of day, certain months, certain seasons. We need programming for that. We need proposal tools for that. Um, so that's to come. But this shaves off thousands of dollars. I'm gonna show you some pricing if your homeowner decides, I don't really need the backup blackout protection, at least right now, or at my area, or I don't, you know, I'll have a generator. So I, I'll save the thousands of dollars for the power saver. And then lastly is power basic. You know, it's just a small solar system. Ideally it's west or south facing, or maybe a few east, you know, when the sun's hitting that, the home gets to use it. And Ideally, you're not really giving a ton back to the grid. So just a small, basic solar system. And friendly reminder, I have a, a very prominent client here, Walnut City of Industry, who's building an ADU. And guess what? She legally has to put solar on her home. And so don't forget about that either, that with ADUs detached in California, solar is legally required and on new homes. They should reach out to Tracy Canoni. Just throwing that out. <laughs> All right. The real value of storage, the big three benefits are grid reliability, as we've been talking about. Storage customers less dependent on the grid and playing with that find the P and time of use and everything that they do. There are protection from future changes and policies if you're on NEM 3.0 with a battery. There are savings and incentives, tax credits, local incentives, rebates, and there's something called SGIP, SGIP. We'll get into more on the market development meetings, but just know that depending on those three big utilities in California, the utility has a rebate. So for example, in SoCal Edison, the basic amount of an SGIP rebate is around $1,400 right now for a 10 kilowatt hour battery. That can increase if your client qualifies for some low income things or they're in a high fire zone or they have a water well water pump on their property. So those things affect the rebate, but just know that there is an SGIP rebate. In some utilities like PG&E, SDG&E, there's only certain funds allotted to those rebates. I never promised them. Um, so we'll continue to talk about the SGIP in more detail, especially on the market development meetings. Um, but there is an additional check if your clients do get one, two, three, four batteries with their solar system. 
And again, backing up power is one of the benefits if they do decide to go with the uh, backup protection, cost savings, environmental benefits, no dirty generators, saving a fridge and freezer and from spoiling food. And even in some of the fire zones along the foothills, we've had clients be off the grid for days and be the only house with power on the block. So the value proposition of storage is, is really, really strong. And shout out to another tier three, Michael Patterson, who sells virtually in California and he sells in Florida and he's been on stage and trains on batteries. If you look up the master class, go to knowledge base type master class, you can find the last master class battery training. Mike was actually one of the trainers. And as a friendly reminder, in Power University, there's a brand new training certification as well. And here you can see some solar edge batteries. So this is a DC coupled battery, pretty efficient. Um, this top left one here is actually my home. So I got the battery and I have this EV charger and it's in the garage, really clean looking. So really happy with the way this looks and you can see some other solar edge installs that power has been doing. All right, let's get into some pricing here and we'll show a few examples and start to wrap this up and do some questions towards the end. So these are the updated storage pricing. There is roughly 10% margin built into these pricings. And if you're in a state that has sales tax, which California does, it's safe to add about nine, 10%. And it's just for easiness sake, just add it to the total price. Um, but this will get more refined as we move along. So an end phase 10 kilowatt battery has uh, just shy of $1,300 of margin, which should equate to what, uh, $800 commission for us. And the solar edge is 13 grand, which is about $1,300 of margin and more commission uh, for us. So that is the pricing. And then Jonathan's Buds post uh, literally days ago, this is the no backup option that he posted on social media and it was in your newsletter yesterday. So make sure to read your newsletter. And right now we just don't have a proposal tool that accurately reflects the no backup pricing. Power Vision is very close. Hopefully this week we'll see Power Vision up and running for NEM3 in general. Right now, if you're selling in California, you do need to use Solo. That is the proposal tool that we'll see here in just a second. But you could see no backup, end phase, 10 kilowatt hour battery, 77.59 with the backup, about 13K plus tax. So that's about a five grand difference, guys. And with two batteries, it's a six grand difference. Looking at Solar Edge, 8,300 plus tax in California, 13 grand plus tax with, with the backup. And again, that's about a $4,700 difference. So It'll be up to us to determine and ask the right questions and do that discovery in the presentation discovery call if our clients are a good candidate or want the extra investment for the backup blackout protection. So take a screenshot of this if you'd like. And honestly, as Jonathan so articulately said here, these battery prices are ridiculously friggin' low. You have an enormous competitive advantage with the power platform. When you look at other companies out there, like our some of our competitors, Sunrun Shift is using a LG battery, which hasn't had the best track record. And the components are not um, quite up to a speed like as a Solar Edge, for example. There's, there's pros and cons, but our equipment and our pricing, trust me, we're positioned to really crush. Uh, the competition. And we are going to see, I think, a weeding out of many companies. There's companies going out of business in Pasadena, Southern California, that they just don't have the funding, the financing, the procurement. Um, you know, power just has such a different model. So that's why we're going to be set up for success here. And Bernasa, before you move on, um, two things. One, 
I doubt that Bud said friggin'. Okay, oh, that's did. just one. Um, well, <laughs> it was close, but and then number two is you know a few people in the chat are asking. They're like, well, why is it a price difference between no backup and backup, but we're using the same batteries? Like, okay. can you explain that? Yeah, thank you so much, and. I'll try to roll through some slides here and then we can maybe open it up for Q&A, but thank you for typing the questions in the chat. So backup and no backup. When you back up loads for blackout protection, you actually generally have to remove those circuit breakers from their existing electrical panel to a sub panel. And then you have to have a smart switch or load controller you know, Enphase or Solar Edge has their own terms for it. So you have to have additional components. You have to take out circuits, back those up on a different sub panel. You need more wiring, more components, more cost. And honestly, that takes another level of a master electrician doing those things. So for all those reasons, that's how we can shave off thousands of dollars here on the price. Perfect. All right. Thank you. All right, so this is a general um, guide. Obviously a small home or a mansion and all these things vary. And this is in the battery certification training in university and the master class that we covered. So please become familiar with it. But one 10 kilowatt hour battery, garage door lights, fridge, microwaves, fans, you know, TV. This is what we call partial home backing up. It's not full home, whole home, 20 kilowatt hour battery. So two batteries, like two end phases or two solar edge. Now we can start to do a larger appliance, maybe like a dishwasher. Often um, one battery can back up three, four circuits. Maybe if it's a solar edge, you could do five circuits. So we're backing up more things or we're doing more self-consumption or load shifting with two batteries. Two to three batteries is, start, is where you start to get into the whole home, depending on the home. And then you're, you are able to do uh, air conditioner or pumps during a blackout with the two to three battery option. And then of course the four battery option is, um, is awesome as well. Even more loads, more large appliances, air conditioner or pumps, and just even more self-consumption if your customer needs a 10, 15, 20 kilowatt system, we don't want to give that energy back to the grid, guys. We have to store it on site. And so that means you need more batteries, the bigger the solar system, the bigger the home. Okay. And we'll, we'll touch on this more and more in future trainings. So just to recap, Power Saver is the NEM 3.0 protection, no backup just self-consumption um, and then we move into that is with the battery and then we move into power house partial or full backup um, so you get the blackout protection self-consumption and power basic is just a small solar system small offset just helping the home when the sun is out no battery there all right so i'd like to keep this rolling um, thank you, Tom or Jared or anyone else for answering the questions in the chat. I'm going to touch on a few things pretty quick here. Sonova has a battery promotion. Uh, if you want to call it a free battery or you want to do a BOGO offer, buy one, get one free battery. Um, I know a few people reached out to me about this. It's a promotion. Okay, Sonova is giving us a discounted pricing. And this is for lease storage, a 25 year lease with storage, okay? And a minimum escalator. With an escalator, yep. Yeah. And this is live and I'll get into some of those details here. So they put it's up to an $8,000 value and they're just trying to help out power and their customers with this transition. So it's March 15th to July 31st is the promotional period. You can do a 25 year lease storage and it has to be PG&E, SDG, and SC and SCE right now. It has to be in those three. And you do have to use a 2.9 or 3.9 escalator 
for this offer to work and get the discounted pricing. One battery is defined as three of the 3.36 end phase. So that's the 10 kilowatt hour end phase or one solar energy bank, 10 kilowatt hour solar energy bank. And we should have Franklin batteries coming soon. All right, now let's get to the fun stuff. Um, I'll talk you through some of this. You know, th this is literally on my mind these last few days, and I'm going to continue to play with these things every day. I encourage you to do the same thing. So when we look at solo, this is an 8.4 kilowatt system. Got the REC panels, 21 of them, a solar edge energy hub for the purpose of this example. This is 125% offset and it's producing 14,983 kilowatt hours per year. So pretty standard California example. Now I do have one energy bank here. You need to either go to adders and equipment, um, hit the menu and hit equipment or scroll down in solo and make sure you've selected the one battery here. And let me see if I can jump up here and show you guys. So here's solo. It asks for evening usage. So the more they use in the evening, the more the leftover utility bill will be. So in my opinion, solo is underestimating the leftover utility bill. I would recommend doing use more or much more, but I'll keep it on average. Backup is how much batteries uh, are gonna have in reserves and how much they're gonna use for load shifting. So 20% for the purpose of our example is a pretty good amount here. So going back to the slide deck, you can see that that homeowner in Edison is paying 34 cents a kilowatt hour or $340 a month. Now, Solo is saying with 20% reserves, the leftover utility bill will be $46 a month. That's a cash price of $44,000 with $13,000 tax credit or $31K net. Not bad on the cash price. Now I'm going to show you some more information. We have the power care warranty. We have $8,400 of margin. And if you guys remember how much margin is in one solar edge battery, about $1,300. So if we add up $8,400 margin, $1,300 battery margin, this commission is over $6,800 for this example. And then there is a proposal tool called Open Solar. It's free. I encourage you all to play with it. Open Solar is saying the leftover utility bill is $64 a month. Okay, so just to go back, Solo is saying 46, Open Solar is saying 64. This is the part that's unknown. We don't know how big the leftover utility bill will be. We can give them a range or an estimate, um, but that's gonna be very important as we move forward. So Open Solar saying 64 a month leftover, Solo saying 46 a month. And this is for one battery, 125% offset. Lastly, we have one battery on the lease storage promotion. So in solo, we have the cash price. They just removed the California NEM2 surge adder, by the way. So um, that is now taken off proposals under 30 days. Make sure to update your proposals. So we have a 25 year lease storage. I put in my cash price of 44K or $5.20 price per watt. And I put a dollar in for the Sonova battery. That is a monthly Sonova payment of $200 with a 3.9% escalator. That's pretty darn good, $200 a month. The homeowner was paying, we said, 340, 
So now we're giving them a $200 bill. And guys, that's 16 cents a kilowatt hour with a 3.9 escalator. There's door knockers and Vivint and Sunrun kids charging 18, 19, 20 cents with solar only, without a battery, with an escalator. Like 16 cents with a 3.9 escalator is pretty damn good, $200 a month. And again, that leftover utility bill, 46 to $64, you know, somewhere in that window. And remember, lease storage, 25 years of battery replacement. So that battery is actually being replaced if it's defective for this 25 year lease. Now, if we compare that with a 25 year 499 loan with Goodly, this has a big dealer fee. The price is 65, 20 grand tax, 45 net. We get a 277 monthly starting payment. If they give the tax credit back, it stays at 277. And I'll pause after the one battery. We'll cover two batteries and then we'll be done. So one battery, um, lease versus loan. I took the time to put this $200 starting 3.9 escalator. And you can see that it goes up every year, obviously. And here's the yearly cost. With the loan, we'll pretend that the 277 monthly and they're able to give back the tax credit so it stays at 277. We're gonna say the leftover utility bill is $64 and the utilities go up 5% per year. And this is for a customer paying 340 a month. So if they continue paying the utility at 5% rate hike, which is conservative, they will give the utility almost 200 grand at the end of 25 years. If they go with the lease, they're only gonna give 98K and then we need to add the leftover utility bill that grows at 5% plus 36. So 135, 135 grand versus 200 grand. We can obviously see which one is better, but we're not just selling savings guys, we're selling, this is blackout protection, independence, rate arbitrage, so much more. Now, if you look at the loan, 83 grand in payments, plus the leftover utility bill, 119. So there's about a 15 grand difference at the end of 25 years, but you didn't get the battery replacement. So it's up to us to determine which one is better for our clients and hope maybe they have the cash and maybe cash is better. And then over here, the cash price after tax credit is 31 grand. So if we are taking the, Current utility bill minus the leftover utility bill, that's about a 10% return on investment and about a nine to 10 year payoff if the rates don't go continue to go up. I would say it's, you know, I'd say be more conservative, guys. The leftover utility bill could be a little bit more. We just don't know at this time. Um, Jared or Tom, any questions on the one battery and this chart so far? Making sense. Uh, I know it's a lot of information. No, it, it's it's great. I mean, and you know, thank you for taking the time and putting together a side by side. You can actually see the difference. I mean, one is ownership, right? One is a lease. Uh, you could truly see cash is king, right? These days, um, and you know, it, it it has my brain going, right? How I'm going to strategize? How I'm going to be setting up my sales? Right. If I know somebody can the ability to pay cash, I might be. You know, I'm going to put that option on the table. If they're looking for the lowest monthly payment, I may be looking at a lease situation where, you know, the four years I've been doing this, I do 99% ownership sales, right? I don't, I don't lead with leases, but it has me, you know, rethinking my strategy. So yeah, it's, it's very interesting. I do think we're going to see more leases uh, come up with NEM 3.0. Someone asked in the chat, important to point out that at this time, I don't, believe Sonova has a self-consumption, no backup mode for us. I need to confirm with the account manager if that fits into Sonova's offering. More to come on that. Again, this is evolving every day, every week right now. 
So I'm gonna show the two battery option and, and wrap this up and then we'll stick around for Q&A. So two batteries, guys, again, you put two batteries in solo. Now solo is saying it's a $6 leftover utility bill with two batteries, 8.4 kilowatt system, 125 offset. I think that's way too low. Um, so be careful. We have to be educated. I wouldn't show this to a homeowner. The two batteries cash price is 53K minus 16 grand is 37K. 8.4 kilowatt, two batteries, 25 year, you know, 30 year warranties on this stuff. 37 grand net. That's not bad. Every home in California is a million and five and change these days, guys. Like this is not bad. And again, two batteries in open solar is showing a $43 leftover bill. I did tell open solar to save 20% in reserves for backup, go ahead and use 80% for self-consumption, two batteries, $43 leftover with open solar. Solo I think is being way too generous at $6 a month. And if you talk to my good friend, Paul Leon, he thinks all of these numbers are too low. We just don't know what their usage habits are and what the leftover utility bill is. So we can only give averages and ranges until we start to understand this better. Two batteries, if you remember, is $2,100 of margin for the backup to Solar Edge plus 8,400. It's 10.5 of margin. That's over a $7,300 commission. And remember, I did these examples with the NEM2 surge adder. So if you want to pass on the, the discount now to the homeowner or increase your commissions, um, the NEM2 surge adder is no longer there. Two batteries on the Sonova lease storage, BOGO. For $230, sorry, $243, you can get two batteries with solar. Um, with a 3.9 escalator, that's just 243 a month, two batteries with the Sonova zero down 25 year lease, battery replacement included, no loan, no debt, uh, no cash, just a 25 year lease, insurance repairs, um, monitoring the whole works. And then here is the 25 year 499, again, with a big dealer fee. I'm not crazy about big dealer fees, but that puts the starting monthly at 334 with the 25 year 499 good leap. And lastly, here we go again. We've got the two battery option starting at 243. We've got the loan starting at 334. We've got the leftover utility bill at $43 based on open solar. And this homeowner is paying 340 a month today to the utility we can see that the lease with the leftover utility bill at the end of 25 years is 144. We can see that the loan is 124. And we can see that if they keep paying utility bill rates for 25 years, we can guarantee they're gonna pay over 200 grand to the utility bill. So the return is around 9%. And the payoff could be 10 to 11 years conservatively. Um, so that kind of concludes the one battery, two battery example, the battery pricing, the lease storage versus cast versus loan, the different offerings and solution that power has, um, and then some of the objection handling. So I will have to uh, go ahead and end this recording now, but we'll stick around for some Q&A. Hopefully the co-hosts or other tier three mentors can stick around. And again, guys, thank you so much. This is evolving. This is changing every few days. Power Vision, hopefully by the end of the week, we'll have NEM3 shown on the proposal. We need to add the load shifting arbitrage uh, device, no backup only. That needs to be coming. That's gonna be coming soon. At this time, we don't know if Sonova is offering the um, no backup option. So stay tuned for that. And we will fine tune the leftover utility bill amounts as we move forward. We all have to really help each other and be educated on this super important topic. But 
I think with these tools and everything we covered, if you watch this training a few times, you should be able to present two or three options to your homeowners. Um, very good ones with the best equipment, the best pricing, and some of the best commission in the industry. So game on.